What does an unhealthy spirituality look like? Uh, first, we use God, we use spirituality as a way to hide from God, from authentic, transforming encounter with God. Second, we have a limited awareness of what we're feeling at any given moment and either ignore what we are sensitive to or we give it way too much power to control things. We don't understand that emotions are kind of the dashboard indicators indicating health in the rest of the system and we don't know what to do with what they're registering. Third, we have negotiated a kind of detente with our self-destructive attitudes, dispositions, and behaviors captioned under the phrase of sin. We've reached a level of acceptance with those practices and lost track then of who we really are. We have resulted then out of that in having almost no capacity to do what we're actually here on earth to do. Number four, we have a very limited awareness of the impact of our family and early experiences and how those have shaped who we are, how we think, all, almost automatically. We, we resist, we deny, and in either of those instances, we don't take seriously that everybody comes from somewhere and to take seriously where we came from and how that shaped us enables us to submit that whole thing to the Lordship of Jesus Christ and let him manage it in ways that are most productive to the kingdom and finding that unique place that we fit in the kingdom. Our jigsaw puzzle fit into the matrix of the whole. Number five, we have, Darren talked about this last week, compartmentalized our life into the sacred sphere and the secular sphere, not realizing that a holistic maturity requires that everything is spiritual. How I, how I spend my money, how I manage my sexuality, how I handle my work responsibilities, how I play, all of that, as well as how I worship, how I'm at church, all of that is under the sphere of the Lordship of Jesus Christ because everything is spiritual. And when we secund spirituality to one side, and this is the place that we live that Jesus doesn't have much to do with, we deny his Lordship over those areas. That's damaging. Uh, six, we perform for God as a way of earning his approval and his love and managing a guilty conscience by doing just enough good things to balance things so that we feel like we're maybe not the best, but we're good enough in comparison to. We always wanna have somebody to make the comparison to. You can't do love by comparison. You can't do it that way. You have to work from the center of God's love, not towards it. You have to land in the reality of his acceptance of you, false and all. Not try and deal with all of the bits and pieces so that God will love you. He already does. Now you gotta take advantage of that in walking that out. Number seven, we mismanage conflict. And conflict is a necessary part of the building of intimacy, of the building of places where we fit. We, 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 we need it to help us grow up in community. And we, we minimize conflict by spiritualizing it or by passive aggressiveness or by cutting humor that's not really actually all that funny, uh, by lying, by, by avoiding, by canceling, uh, by, by gossiping. All of those ways render conflict useless to the building up of wholeness. Number eight, we turn a blind eye to our own brokenness, our own weakness, our own failure, and make excuses or find somebody to blame so that we don't have to say, it's me. We don't have to own our own story. And instead then of taking those things and offering the, them up as, as objects and places of redemption and growth, they become useless and toxic. Number nine, we have a limited sense 
of appropriate boundaries, where we end and others begin, and what it means to care for the self that is us because we don't even know the self that is us. Boundaries are necessary for holistic self-care and it enables us to love others well without being parasites on the love of others. Uh, and it enables us to build towards holistic intimacy. Then finally, number 10, we make evaluative judgments about others and live our lives in comparison, which is the essence of pride, and which then ends up murdering self-sacrificing love, which is how we are to orient ourselves to one another. And all of this, I, I think it's fair to say, has ripple effects out into the culture, out into the society, out into our ability to make disciples of, of Jesus. Would the Jesus that I follow as marked by my character be attractive to someone who sees me in, on the street? That's where we're going, that holistic discipleship.